funeral held for Connecticut slave who died in 1798 vertical line all jays America. Doc Global header background image. URL slash content slash a jam slash JCR colon content slash header slash image and stop dot adapt dot nine hundred sixty dot high dot one trillion three hundred seventy nine billion forty one million seven hundred eighty nine thousand three hundred sixty two dot JPG at media minimum width seven hundred sixty eight PX and max width nine hundred fifty nine PX dot global header background image URL slash content slash a jam slash JCR colon content slash header slash image double dot adapt dot nine hundred sixty dot high dot one trillion three hundred seventy nine billion forty one million seven hundred eighty nine thousand three hundred sixty two dot JPG at me via max width seven hundred sixty seven PX dot global header background image URL slash content slash a jam slash JCR colon content slash header slash them gem mobile dot adapt dot seven hundred fifty three dot medium dot one trillion three hundred seventy nine billion forty one million seven hundred eighty nine thousand three hundred sixty two dot JPG display mobile navigation display mobile search bar news video shows schedule more shows sections US International Economy Technology Science Environment Health Education Culture Sports Trending Serious War Natural Disasters Economy Religion Spirituality Ethics Search Form Funeral Held for Connecticut Slave Who Died in 1798 September 12, 2013 10-11 a.m. at Skeleton of Mr. Fortune had been displayed in the Matavit Museum from the 1940s until 1970 Topics Connecticut Race Ethnicity U.S. Viewed comments. Caleb Pilgrim, left, and Marie Baskerville pray over the casket with the remains of an enslaved man known as Mr. Fortune. Jessica Hill slash AP. A slave who died more than 200 years ago in Connecticut but was never buried was given an extraordinary funeral Thursday that included lying in state at the Capitol and calls for learning from his painful life. The enslaved man known as Mr. Fortune was buried in a cemetery filled with prominent citizens after a service at the Waterbury Church where he had been baptized. Earlier in the day, his remains lay in state in the Capitol Rotunda in Hartford. Our brother Mr. Fortune has been remembered, and it is with restored dignity his bones shall be buried, the Rev. Amy D. Wellen of Street. John's Episcopal Church in Waterbury told hundreds gathered for the service, We bury Mr. Fortune not as a slave but as a child of God who is blessed. Fortune teaches us today about the long and convoluted path to justice and reconciliation, Wellen said, adding later that this story from Waterbury's past calls us to remember and to continue our commitment to justice. The service was marked by thunderous singing that shook the old church at times, occasional clapping, applause and cries of amen as a coffin containing Fortune's bones was placed in front of the altar amid scripture readings that included Paul's declaration that there is no longer slave or free. Wellen said they had gathered for a man they never knew whose life was marked by paradox. Fortune was a slave who owned a house, had a wife and four children but had no control over the disposition of his body when he died and was never given the dignified burial despite being baptized as an Episcopalian, she said. Fortune was owned by Dr. Preserved Porter on a farm in Waterbury. When Fortune died in 1798, Porter, a bone surgeon, preserved his skeleton by having the bones boiled to study anatomy at a time when cadavers for medical study were disproportionately taken from slaves, servants and prisoners. One of Porter's descendants gave the skeleton in 1933 to Matavit Museum in Waterbury, where it was displayed from the 1940s until 1970. The descendant referred to the slave as Larry, and his name was forgotten at the time. The local historical account from 1896 claimed Larry slipped on a rock and drowned in the river. Tests over the years, including the recent exam at Quinnipiac University, found evidence of a nerve fracture around the time of death not associated with hanging. The university has not been able to determine the cause of his death. The study by Quinnipiac concluded that Fortune was about 5 feet 5 inches tall and died when he was around 55 years old, said Richard Gonzalez an assistant professor and forensic anthropologist at Quinnipiac's School of Medicine. He suffered a number of painful ailments, including a fracture in his left hand, a severe ankle sprain and lower back pain. The museum has long wanted to give Fortune the proper burial, director Bob Burns said. The latest tests, which included CD scans of the bones, will allow researchers to continue studying the bones without the need for the physical remains.